Thank you, Chair. Firstly, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting Champagne to this event. I would also like to thank the Bloody Sunday Committee for continuing to facilitate events such as this. I do not believe that we can overstate the impact and influence of Bloody Sunday on contemporary Irish life and politics. Indeed, there are people from all over the world who have been touched and influenced by the tragic events of that Sunday afternoon in January 36 years ago. People who are inspired and energized by the dogged determination and commitment of those who struggle for the truth of what happened on that day and on the days and weeks before, particularly the families of the murdered and those who were injured. Therefore, it is entirely appropriate for us to be gathered here in this hall and Gary discussing that very issue, the struggle for truth and justice and the battle through layer after layer of lies and cover-ups to get to the truth. A couple of weeks ago, I listened to Raymond McNutt speak about his family's treatment when they attended the inquest into his brother Colin's murder. When they attempted to ask questions, they were simply told, sit there and shut up. There were no answers for the McNutt family because the state did not feel obliged to be They believed that they could and they did act with impunity. There were no witnesses who would contradict the agreed story. There never is. Nobody even looked for them. The agreed story was not even tested or challenged. The state did not want and therefore did not allow any credible investigation into their military operations. The media had already got the line, which they carry, as always, not many questions there either. And immediately any expectation of truth and justice is drowned out by the latest report of another armed terrorist being buried with bomb of the arms. We're all too familiar with that scenario and the power of the state's propaganda machine. In fact, it wasn't that long ago we were being told that shoot to kill and collision just didn't exist. The folly of that statement has been clearly demonstrated in recent months. Slowly but surely, the lead is being prized off the can of worms that is Britain's dirty war in Ireland. Some excellent, but what must be painfully hard work over many years by families and campaigning groups has uncovered information and evidence that had been suppressed by the state at the time of inquests or other investigations. I am sure that work will continue and I commend all those involved. The British and the Free State have worked hard down through the years to deny bereaved families any information or evidence about the circumstances in which their loved ones died. They have denied them truth, justice and any chance of dealing with loss and suffering. There are numerous examples of evidence going missing, being sold, destroyed, destroyed in mysterious fires and quite often never even gathered in the first place. Inquests have been delayed, sometimes for years. Others have been railroaded through without any proper investigation of the circumstances. Public interest immunity certificates have been used at will. Inquiries which were held were obstructed and frustrated all the way, and reports buried when it suited. Rules for inquiries have been changed in order to maximise the chances of getting absolutely nowhere. And what is this truth which they are so intent on denying, hiding and covering up? The truth is, the British state, in defence of its illegal occupation of part of our country, and of its unqualified support for the corrupt unionist regime which prevailed here, was prepared to engage in a sustained campaign of murder. Sometimes this was direct, i.e. when British forces murdered our people on our streets, such as in Bloody Sunday, or in Operation Roman, or when young English and Brown died, Paul Waters, Patsy Duffy, Bronco Bradley, and the list goes on. Other times it was less direct, but just as deadly. Collusion with unionist murder gangs led to many deaths, like Annie Barr, Raising Sun, Pro 
Porter and Bryson Donegal, Eddie Forden and also in Donegal, Joe Ellett, John Tone, Kevin O'Hearn, and again the list goes on. That the British state has committed human rights violations in Ireland is undeniable, yet it is strongly denied. They will persist in these denials until forced to do our ways. We, collectively, with a common purpose, can achieve that. This notion that we are in a period of conflict resolution and reconciliation with the other side, while the process is managed and overseen by a benign and neutral British government, is an, an insult and totally unacceptable to the victims, to their families, the injured, and all those who have endured the harassment, the threats, the physical abuse, torture, strip searching, and imprisonment. The British have not even acknowledged, never mind taking responsibility for being the main cause of the war and one of the main protagonists in it. They must acknowledge and accept their role in the conflict and they must take full responsibility for their actions and for the actions of those who acted on their behalf. Two weeks ago, a number of campaigning groups, the Pat Finnegan Centre, Relatives for Justice, Justice for the Forbidden, the Ardoin Commemoration Project, and Ferenia and Ferenia Fermana, who between them represent over 1,000 victims of the conflict from across Ireland, have issued a statement calling for the establishment of an, an independent international truth commission. Jerry Adams, speaking on behalf of Sinn Féin, has welcomed this contribution and has reiterated our party's commitment to finding a way forward in this issue. Sinn Féin believes the formation of this mechanism in the is the duty and responsibility of all political parties and wider civic society. Political posturing and political self-interest cannot be allowed to be an obstacle to moving this situation forward. All of us have a responsibility to create the circumstances through which the needs of all victims are met. Recent experiences in the to indicate that not much has changed. Is anyone here surprised that there are still members of the PSNI prepared to lie in court and fabricate evidence, or that the prosecution service would pursue a case so clearly full of holes just to keep a political prisoner in jail, or that the courts at various stages would simply accommodate this internment by remand? Of course not. We know that there is massive opposition to change in certain quarters, and that change will be slow and painful, but there will be change. Sinn Féin is committed to that and is actively pursuing it on a daily basis. Every incident of political policing must and will be challenged and exposed. Nothing has ever been given to those who struggle. We have to fight for it. We have to take it. The families of the victims of state violence will know that only too well. But they have clearly demonstrated that persistence, determination against all the odds will eventually run through. Come on.